morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, or should I say good afternoon now? It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets midday uh, update uh, on the uh, Wednesday, or should I say Tuesday? I've got my timing and my, uh, my dates wrong at the moment. Tuesday, 22nd November 2016. Be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and Market Updates from Leading Providers at www.tradesignal.com, and you can certainly download the app by the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's um, let's see the actual uh, data. So first of all, uh, overnight you have the Asian market certainly moving higher again on the back of U.S. markets breaking that key 21.94 level. I did explain this um, in my previous video. It was all about a 21.94, but this 21.94 level certainly seems circumspect to me, uh, especially given the uh, Thanksgiving weekend light volume, etc., etc. The weekly chart at the moment is certainly uh, rearing its head above that key resistance, that 21.94. Uh, the daily chart certainly has broken through it, but we have a major, uh, major fundamental um, shift, and that that is the TPP. Okay, Mr. Trump has certainly uh, announced that the first thing he'll do is scrap and exit the TPP deal, uh, and, he, and he called it shambles. So again, that is negative for growth going forward. So again, certainly focus on that. We did have a earthquake in Japan overnight. The market certainly have ignored that. You have the Japanese market certainly closing higher on the back of that, although. One could argue flat, okay, up 0.3%, although they were down when the actual earthquake news actually hit. Uh, the uh, Nikkei did actually crash down to 18,000, just sub 18,000 at one time, until it reversed 200 points back up to 18,200. So it's currently closed at 18,160, and again, one could argue more or less flat. Although we did have the Shanghai closing up by uh, almost a percentage point, which is pretty impressive okay to a large extent and but that can certainly be attributed to the weaker yuan certainly helping the uh, the shanghai index and now whether or not that's bullish for uh, the um, the actual european or the u.s markets again certainly circumspect and certainly needs to be questioned now the european markets did gap higher so the the fact that the u.s markets and the asian markets were higher overnight was certainly factored in if you look at the FTSE 100 We've certainly gapped higher from the close at 6770. We've certainly gapped higher almost by uh, almost in excess of 80 points, and now we're reversing at present. So, certainly, um, the gap uh, certainly has been factored in. Also, if you look at the German DAX as well, folks, you can certainly see we've gapped higher here. Uh, and again, the gap certainly is coming into question. So, uh, the gap lower was 10,685 up to uh, 10, almost, um, almost a 100 point gap on the back of that. So that certainly has been factored into the markets. Now, it's whether or not the markets can sustain that, okay? From my perspective, my understanding, certainly not, especially with the announcement of this TT, TPP trade deal, okay? And we also have political uncertainty in France as well. In terms of fundamentals this morning, nothing really major coming out of Europe, okay? Um, we did have uh, CHF imports and exports slightly, uh, or the imports were slightly the stronger side, but the exports on the weaker side and the trade balance certainly suffered as well. Mr. Draghi yesterday was more or less neutral, okay, from my understanding. Uh, the Euro USD certainly remained above 106, and, and that certainly is negative, uh, more towards the hawkish stance, if anything. And it'll be interesting to see how markets react with regards to that, okay. Uh, in terms of German bubble monthly report, we had that yesterday. Uh, we have had some negative comments from Mr. Schauble, uh, hawkish comments with regards to interest rates not moving any lower, hence the reason why you're seeing 1.06 holding steady. And that certainly is net net negative from my understanding. Okay, And again, uh, the political uncertainty with regards to France and Italy certainly has not been factored into the markets. It certainly is being, uh, shall we say, uh, painted over by US market strength. Now, with US markets now potentially at loggerheads, certainly a very strong argument for US markets to reverse here, given the fact that the 2200 stops have certainly been knocked out, we could certainly reverse very sharply in the opposite direction, given the TPP deal. And given the fact that the markets certainly are oversold in general. Let's just bring up the NASDAQ as well. Let me just show you the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has a key resistance. Now, the NASDAQ itself certainly powered ahead. Now, I didn't expect the Japanese earthquake to send the NASDAQ low. It failed to do so. Now, we do have uh, the resistance on the NASDAQ, which is quite important here, uh, around this 48880 zone. And you have gap fill at 4890. So given the fact that the, uh, the S&P for the NASDAQ futures overnight did actually reach 4882, I think, at one point, uh, you are looking at a potential uh, pause here. A pause in the Nasdaq means pause in global markets, and you are looking for a flush in European equity. So looking for risk aversion. Okay, folks, that's my understanding and my interpretation. 
Okay, so in terms of technicals, let's just quickly go over to the German DAX first and foremost. You can see the German DAX certainly struggling to fail, uh, well, certainly to hold this potential gap. Okay, we have gone and tested the lows immediately after testing the highs, so certainly have fallen. And you are looking at gap fill from my understanding, okay? Uh, daily chart, again, on the German DAX still remains weak. We're still failing to uh, move higher and follow the US markets and therefore is a sign of weakness. And we all know why, given the uncertainties in Europe right now. Uh, you have the support zone below at 10,600. Obviously, gap fill will be your first target on the downside. Bringing up the French CAC. Okay, so my bias is bearish on the French CAC. I'm actually short the French CAC at the moment as well, looking for gap fill below. So certainly that's my uh, uh, initial aim. Your gap fill is currently 4,530, and that's the zone that I'll be looking to target on the downside. So is the gap fill, gap justified? certainly is uh, comes into question especially given the fact that mr shobel is hawkish mr dragish with neutral stroke hawkish and now we have obviously political uncertainty in france and italy certainly weighing on the markets as well okay so looking for gap fill below FTSE 100 certainly yesterday it was lagging due to the strength in sterling and obviously uh, brexit concerns brexit concerns certainly remains remains the uh, the main reason and now we do have this hns formation folks if you are trading the daily chart or should I say you are looking at a potential HNS formation and you are looking for a flush on the FTSE 100 with a target being 6170. So from my perspective, FTSE 30 is very bearish. OK, you are looking at uh, uh, the FTSE flushing, OK, looking to potentially move lower. And it certainly has been the weakest link OK, in, in global markets. So look for a flush on the uh, the actual FTSE 100 itself. Looking at a 60 minute chart of the FTSE, you can see that we held that key resistance at 6850. It's a shame I was stopped out, unfortunately, on the FTSE before it reversed. Okay, uh, And you are looking at potential support. If we do flush lower here, your support at 6815 certainly will be tested on the FTSE, so just bear that in mind. Okay, certainly will be tested. Okay, so moving on to the Euro stocks now. Let's just bring up the Euro stocks. Okay, Euro stocks. So you are into horizontal resistance in the Euro stocks, as you can see. Key resistance has held at uh, 3060 and looking for a flush. Now it's all about that gap fill below. Okay, daily chart as well still remains weak from my understanding, from my perspective. This just looks like one big bear flag to me. Okay, looking to potentially flush and move lower. Moving on to the 10 minute chart. Again, like I said, it's all about gap fill. Looking for that gap to be filled at 3030 on the downside, so looking for a move lower. Okay, I think that's a good summation. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.